Shiodome is one of the newest parts of Tokyo. It's full of brand new, cutting edge skyscrapers, and it's one of the most impressive parts of the capital. In terms of geography, look towards the bottom right of the city. So here we have Shimbashi Station, and as you can see, it sits on the Asakusa Line and the Ginza Line. And the Ginza Line is really important for getting around Tokyo because you can travel around the city without having to go through Tokyo Station, which it's best to avoid if possible. You may have noticed the Shiodome Station there as well, uh, but it's not very well connected and they're very close to each other, so most of the time you'll just be going through Shimbashi Station. So if you ride the Ginza Line North, you can get to Ueno, home of Ueno Park, and Asakusa, which contains the Asakusa Shrine, one of the most famous Shinto shrines in all of Tokyo. Riding the Ginza Line West, and you'll come to Akasaka Mitsuke, which is full of bars and restaurants, and is in general just a great place to spend the evening, and Aoyama Ichome, which is a really big shopping destination in Tokyo. And if you ride to the terminus of the Ginza Line, you get to Shibuya, which is covered in a separate article, but it's world famous for its shopping. This is Shiodome as seen from the Tokyo Tower, and as you can see, even in a city as congested as Tokyo, Shiodome sticks out as being a little different. Once you're here, you start getting your bearings by the hotels and the office towers. So in the center of the picture, we can see the Conrad and the Royal Park, and these are the two most popular hotels in the area. So their central location makes it easy to get around. Now one of the first things you notice when you walk around Shiodome is the highly organized uh, nature of the place. So in addition to the regular sidewalk, you have these elevated walkways uh, which connect the hotels, the train stations and the tram. And these are just a much easier way of getting around if you're not really too familiar with the street layout. So if you're walking around these bridges, so to speak, there'll be little signposts directing you along the way how to get from a hotel to a landmark, say, or to another hotel. So if you're a first-time visitor, I would recommend that you stick to these uh, because it's pretty hard to get lost on here. Again, here we can see the elevated walkways, and now we can see the elevated train as well. Uh, this connects Shiodome and some other stops to Odaiba, the island playpen of Tokyo, which is full of arcades, bars, restaurants, uh, it's a great place to spend a few hours. Um, it's a totally different side to Tokyo, but it's worth taking this train because of the views you get of Rainbow Bridge and the harbor. And it's not very expensive, and it's only a 10 minute journey, so well worth the trip. Now, having all these different levels can get confusing after a while. Here, this is Shiodome City Center, and I would recommend this as the best place to start your trip. Uh, there's a lot of different bars and restaurants, so you'll definitely be able to find the meal you're looking for. Uh, and the usual 7-Eleven, Family Mart, uh, there's a couple of coffee shops, etc. Uh, but here you can see that we've got the lowest level, which has shops and restaurants, the street level, which has the entrances to the buildings, and then a third elevated level in the background with pedestrians walking along. Uh, my advice would be if you stick to the elevated level, you can see everything going down underneath you. So you're not really going to miss out on anything with the bird's eye view. This is just another view of what it's like walking around the streets in Shiodome. Um, but actually this area is quite interesting because very close to this you have the Hayao Miyazaki clock, which I'll show you in the next picture. And this is it. It was designed by Hayao Miyazaki, the director of Spirited Away, and there'll usually be a crowd outside because every time I've been here there's been some sort of performance or street fair going on. So it's always a lively place. It's very, very hard to miss this. Here you can kind of see the clock on the outside of the Nippon Television Tower, uh, in case you were interested. That's the building it's on. Uh, and very close to this is the other famous building in Shiodome. The Dentsu building with the Yurika Mome train passing in front of it. Uh, Dentsu is Japan's largest advertising company. Now a lot of Shiodome uh, is built underground, so you'll spend a lot of your time walking through passages that look a bit like this, and it's great because if it ever rains or it's hot outside, this really does shelter you well. 
Now, you can travel pretty far and wide down here. From Shiodome, you can walk 10 minutes and be in Ginza, or you can do a five minute walk and get to Shimbashi Station. Uh, there's 7 Elevens, Lawson's Family Marts down here, and it does connect a lot of the main shopping and eating areas with all of the hotels. So the hotels will have their own separate entrances to get down to this network. And uh, it really makes it easier if you're traveling about because instead of having to navigate the streets, you can go underground as well. So if you're ever struggling for directions in Shiodome, either head for the elevated walkways or the underground because they're all labeled and they're all in English. And there's maps spread out pretty well. So you really shouldn't have too much trouble navigating around here. So this is uh, Koreda Shiodome and you can access it from that underground network. Uh, now this is a pretty interesting place to come and hang out for a while. There's bars and restaurants, uh, some fast food if you're struggling, uh, but the whole place livens up a bit more at night. So as you can see here when the sun goes down it's a little bit more impressive. Uh, there's a pretty wide selection of restaurants and bars here as well as convenience stores and general shops selling clothes, office supplies and whatnot. Uh, in general the bars and restaurants will be open until about 11 o'clock while the fast food and the convenience stores will be open for a few hours after that and in terms of geography it's right next to Shinbashi's uh, metro station so this is a really good point of call if you're staying at the Conrad or the Royal Park because you'll probably be walking past it so much it's a really good place to stop off and pick up supplies on your way back to the hotel now one place that did stick in my mind and there's not really a, a whole bunch of places that you have to go to in Shiodome in terms of food or drink but I thought this place the Belgian beer garage was quite a nice change um, they do like a European pub theme with a whole bunch of European beers and tapas style food it's not bad in terms of Tokyo. They do have a pretty wide selection of beers. The staff's knowledgeable and the food is semi-authentic. And when you're talking about European imitation, that's pretty high praise in this city. And they also have this wall of fame set up with all the different types of beer that they have in stock. So uh, it's pretty good fun to sit here and try and pick out the most random one you've ever had. Uh, try the quack if you ever get a chance. Now on to some hotels. Uh, the two big ones are the Royal Park and the Conrad. Uh, both are five star, both have excellent reviews and service. The Royal Park is quite a bit cheaper, that usually goes for about 300 a night, uh, whereas the Conrad can be up to about 600 US a night as a starting point. Um, but like I said, both of them are really indistinguishable. Uh, if you have some brand loyalty to Hilton, then you'd pick the Conrad like we do. But the Royal Park is one of the highest rated hotels in Tokyo, all things considered. Uh, this is what a standard room at the Conrad looks like. And it's pretty big. I believe it's the biggest hotel room in Tokyo. So if space is a concern, you might want to take this into account. The height of both of these hotels means that you'll get a good view over the harbour. And this is the Hamariku Gardens. Uh, it's pretty peaceful to walk through and a lot of people go jogging in the mornings. It's right next to both the Royal Park and the Conrad. So be sure to check it out and have a little stroll through when you get a chance. And on the other side you'll get a view of the Greater Tokyo area. If you really concentrate you can see uh, Mount Fuji in the background there, just right of the Tokyo Tower. So at night this is one of the most impressive views in the world. All the buildings are lit up, uh, the tower is illuminated, and it really is just a magical place to spend the evening. So I hope you found this guide to Shiodome useful. It's an often overlooked but worthwhile part of the city to come and visit. And this is a picture I took from my Conrad window late one night. And it really gives you an idea as to you know the buzz and the atmosphere that this place has even late at night. So I really hope you have a good time there.